It's beautiful, isn't it? But like so many other things of exquisite beauty, this one is stirring up some major concerns. The waters of the Western Atlantic, including the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean, are witnessing the emergence of an invasive species, Terawis volitans, the lionfish, a bold, voracious predator with a mane of venomous spines capable of rendering a sting fatal to some marine species and excruciatingly painful to humans. They are indigenous to the Indo-Pacific, Introduced into these waters either by accident or neglect or both, the spread of the lionfish here has been downright viral. These Piscine pincushions now range from North Carolina to South America. No one can authoritatively pinpoint a Mrs. O'Leary's cow to blame this on, but anecdotal evidence suggests that they had been released into American Atlantic waters as early as the 80s. It is suspected that aquarium owners, tired of lionfish eating everything else in their tanks, did the quote-unquote humane thing by throwing them into the ocean. It is also reported that six lionfish escaped into the sea in South Florida when Hurricane Andrew destroyed a shorefront home in 1992. However they got here, they are causing grave concerns. Some call this onslaught the death knell for the Caribbean reefs. This made me wonder, then, why the most splendid reefs I have seen all over the world, from the Red Sea to Southeast Asia, have lionfish on them. In their native waters, they have been integrated into the food chain for millennia. Fear and misinformation abound as an excitable marine community struggles with the invasion and tries to decide what to do about it. Most often, the decision means a death sentence. I first learned how to scuba dive in the Gulf of Mexico. To find out what lionfish could mean here, we've come to the Texas State Aquarium in Corpus Christi. The Texas State Aquarium serves as an educational center for marine awareness. Here, we ask Jesse Gilbert, director of animal husbandry, what the Gulf of Mexico can expect. The effect will be uh, in stages, I think. As we see the initial population start to increase, we'll see maybe smaller reef fish, uh, crustaceans, um, populations be affected and as the predator population learns to adapt to consuming lionfish then we'll start to see probably some leveling out of, of that over a span of years. Also in Corpus Christi is the Heart Research Institute for Gulf of Mexico Studies, Dr. Tom Shirley. Many of the, the fish that they would prey upon, and these are typically small uh, reef fishes, uh, do not view them as predators because they did not have these uh, lionfish here naturally. So they are serious predators on many of the, the small fishes found associated with uh, coral reefs. In addition to being executive director here, I chair the Flower Guards National Marine Sanctuary Advisory Program. Uh, and it is really the healthiest coral reef that we have uh, in North America. And it's about 50% living coral, which is an astounding uh, figure. Uh, we, we do not know that we have lionfish there now. We hope that we don't. But we clearly, clearly see uh, them moving toward us. Uh, and it's a great concern and it's really frustrating because we don't know what we can do about it because there's such great depths of coral around our, our coral heads. We know they're down there beyond our ability to reach them. So it's unfortunately kind of a watch and see and I'm afraid that's what's uh, happening around the world where it's also invading. Marine communities in affected areas are responding to the spread of lionfish in various ways. In most places this is done by volunteer responders. Fearing that the marine industry could suffer great losses at the fins of these invaders, Joe Gooley of St. Croix founded CORE, the Caribbean Oceanic Restoration and Education Foundation. We haven't seen damage caused by the lionfish yet. I don't believe they've been here long enough to wipe out enough fish to where the algae is going to grow and, and suffocate the corals. Where we're diving, we're still finding um, abundant juvenile fish and adult fish. Uh, so we're making a difference before it's too late. 
At least one country, Belize, once had a $50 bounty on their heads, dead or alive. Given the huge area for potential habitat on the Mesoamerican reef, the second largest barrier reef in the world, the spread of lionfish was so explosive that the program quickly ran out of money. At Hugh Parkey's Belize dive experience on Spanish Lookout Key, we set up shop in the bunkhouse and spend a week studying lionfish. This is a very healthy reef system and home to a thriving community of sea life. Some are quite peculiar and dangerous. On the barrier reef and atolls of this part of the Caribbean, dive leaders often double as lionfish hunters, bringing death from above at the tips of simple steel spears. They take hundreds of lionfish off the reef. Using one to make the kill, they make a lionfish kebab with the other. At Hugh Parkey's, something amazing happened. Luckily, I had a camera right in front of me and was barely able to capture this frigate bird chowing down on one. I'm from Texas. I think the way we might deal with this is to tell local fishermen that lionfish taste good and there's a limit of two. Could cuisine be their Achilles heel? Unfortunately, the experts don't think so. The jury is still out on lionfish derbies too. Sponsored by Reef, a derby in Key West attracted 18 teams competing for over $3,000 in cash and prizes. Most agree that they are useful as a platform for outreach and education. Sean Morton is the NOAA superintendent for the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. He spoke with us about the benefits of such events. Well, with the lionfish in the Florida Keys, eradication is not going to happen. They're, they're pretty much here to stay. But events like this, the Lionfish Derby, it does a, a couple things. It's outreach to the community to let them know that there is this problem with an invasive species. But we also uh, open the stomach contents and really get a handle on some of the science about what the lionfish are eating here in the Florida Keys. Along with perhaps the most famous sunset in America, most of the allure of Key West has been associated with the water surrounding it. The sea and reefs of the Keys figure prominently in the local economy and lifestyle. From the start, local dive operators mobilized to try to stem the influx of lionfish. It seems to have worked. At Dive Key West, one of the oldest dive shops in the Florida Keys, owner Bob Holston tells us what they're doing. They are going to be here to stay. Uh, the only thing we can hope to do is keep them in check. And by doing that, we need to have better awareness with the divers, the operators, and not only here in the Keys, but throughout the country so that they can also realize what an invasive species may do to an environmental area. The scientific community considers marine protected areas, or MPAs, as absolutely essential to the survival of the sea. One place in the Caribbean has been tuned in to MPAs for a long time. Boasting coral reefs, which NOAA has declared perhaps the most pristine in the Caribbean, Bonaire has a lot to lose. Their standing as a premier dive destination in the Caribbean didn't happen by accident. They have always been in the forefront of thoughtful management of their marine resource. For example, spear guns have been outlawed for about 50 years here. In order to address the threat of the lionfish invasion, that had to be changed and it was changed by legislation. In 1979, the entire fringing reef surrounding Bonaire was designated a protected area, from the high water mark to a depth of 200 feet. Spear guns have been banned here for decades, and it took legislative action to allow their use in taking lionfish from the MPA. Most of the scientific community agrees that it's all about balance, and that nature will ultimately adapt and find that balance. We see sometimes that an invasion occurs and then nature kind of balances things out. Uh, we haven't seen that balancing yet with uh, the lionfish, and so we don't know what's going to take place there. There is the concern of them being pre-voracious predators and feeding on the natural populations that are there. Uh, there are things that feed upon them also, so that may be a balance that takes place eventually in time. In this particular case with lionfish, I imagine some sort of balance will happen. I, I don't know what it is, and I don't really know. I just, I just, my gut feeling just says, Going out there and getting everyone, giving everyone knives and catch bags and having them kill these things is probably not the right way to go. There needs to be some serious uh, scientific investigation into this, and then it needs to disseminate among all the diving community so people actually know what's going on. We give the final word to a woman recognized as a leading defender of the blue heart of our planet, Dr. Sylvia Earle. The best thing we can do right now is to stop killing the sharks, stop killing 
the barracuda and the groupers and the snappers. Do what we can to restore the integrity to these systems. In due course, as happens in all of these situations where an organism comes in, seems to just take off and dominate, after a while it settles down. We'll probably never eliminate lionfish. But if we take measures to restore the integrity to the systems, lionfish may be subdued into an ongoing place, not a dominant place that we now have concerns about. So that's my solution. Let's do what we can to stop killing the fish that ultimately would munch on the lionfish. Look out, he's coming to get you. To fall from home, they're not alone. They're here to stay. More each day. Lionfish, lionfish, kill, kill, kill. If your name's fish, friend, Homer, or Bill. Lionfish, lionfish, kill, kill, kill.